let me fix this a little bit here. <laughs> this podium's a little, uh, little small for me, so. <laughs> Good morning, Santa Fe Indian School. Um, it is my distinct honor and privilege to be able to stand in front of you today in front of all these amazing students, teachers, staff, and parents. Um, I'm honored to be able to speak to you and to share what little knowledge and wisdom I have acquired over the short 20 years of my life. I am truly gracious of all the wonderful staff and students who have invited me here today to speak. You know, I, uh, I actually came back from Washington, D.C. yesterday, and I met with many members of Congress, senators, and uh, representatives, and uh, two of the people who I met with was Deb Holland and Sharice Davids, the, the first two Native Americans to ever, to ever hold a, a spot in the United States Congress. And I was so honored and, and touched by all these, uh, these students and their, their projects that every member of Congress that I met with, I told them all about the incredible work that is going on here in Santa Fe, in Santa Fe Indian School, and how incredible these students are and how passionate they are. And so every member of Congress from New Mexico and uh, Kansas knows about your projects and they all love them just as much as I do. So I just want to share that with you. You know, last time I was here, I, uh, I met with some of the students and I listened to all the projects that they've been working on all year long. Um, you know, I wasn't expecting the projects to be as fulfilling as, as, they, as they were and as powerful as they are. And chills ran through my body as I listened to these amazing young people tell me about their projects. The most powerful part about it all is that these are not simply school projects. These are real life solutions, solutions to many of the issues that plague our homes and our people. I remember one student talking about bringing renewable energy back to the reservation. Another student was talking about using traditional ways to heal ailments and disease within our communities. A few other students talked to me about ways to revitalize their language, their tribal languages, and keeping their history and the heritage of their people strong and powerful. And there are so many more powerful projects and presentations today that you will get to hear. Now, I don't know about, I don't know about any of you, and especially the students and staff here, but if, I don't know if you've seen the curriculum of other high schools, but you know, these aren't normal topics of discussion let alone year-long research projects. So when I heard these projects for the first time, it was absolutely essential for me to echo something that I know all of your teachers have also told you. These projects do not end today after you present them. Today is only the beginning of something beautiful. If you want to see change within your communities, it is absolutely essential for each and every one of you students here today to see these projects come into fruition. Today, we get to see the results of their hard work and discipline. Today is not just a moment for these students here presenting. Today is a moment for all of us in here to be able to see the power and determination that we collectively share as a community. We get to witness a moment of innate beauty and passion where the full potential of our youth will be on display for all to see. Today is a day of resilience for knowing that after all that we've been through as Native people, we are still here and we remain powerful and connected. And for all of you young people here today, you have been passed the torch from those who have come before you. All those who have sacrificed for you, all those who have fought and died and struggled knowing that their struggles and pain will one day be rewarded 
knowing that their sacrifices will one day allow their people to not only survive, but to thrive. And it is now up to you to carry that torch into the future, to carry your people into the future. That torch represents not just your people and your community, but all of humanity. Within that torch are the hopes, the dreams, the ambitions, the passion, the struggle, and sacrifices of those before you, the values and the morals that make you who you are today. And one day in the future, you too will pass the torch of progress and ultimate prosperity. To carry this torch is to carry the weight of the world. However, our collective story has made us a strong and powerful people. And whenever we fall short or the weight of the world becomes too unbearable to withstand, you must remember that you are not journeying this path alone. Not only do you have an entire generation of young people walking the road with you, your ancestors have already paved the path for you. Whenever you are weak, your ancestors shall give you strength. Whenever you are scared, the courage of a nation shall guide you towards prosperity. Whenever you are lost, the map left within your heart and your DNA shall guide you back to the path. If ever you are poor, the richness of your culture and heritage shall provide you with an abundance of wealth that no amount of money or material possessions can rival. Those who have come before you have paved the path and dropped you off at the finish line. It is now up to you, the students here, whether you wish, across, wish to step across that line. You know, we all have a story. Each and every one of us in here today, young or old, we all have a story. Some of us express stories of success and, and joyfulness. Some of us share stories of pain and anguish. But whatever your story is, use it. Use it to guide you in life. Never forget who you are and where you come from. For when you understand who you are and embrace where you come from, that knowledge and understanding will guide you to where you need to be in life. So today, I am here to speak to you about everlasting change. I am here today to let all of you know that change is constant and necessary to make the world a better place. No matter your upbringing, no matter your race, your religion, your ethnicity or gender, whether you are young or old, rich or poor, you all have the tools and capacity to inspire change, not just in your own lives, but in those all around you each and every day. Change can start by doing one good thing a day, one simple act of kindness a day, each and every day. Everlasting change can start locally and violently explode into an entire movement of people from all walks of life. People who come from a different world than you. People who all have different stories and ambitions. People who are vastly different from you. But people who share the same passion and convictions as you regardless of who you are or where you come from, regardless of your religion or your nationality, everlasting change is a universal language, a language that all passionate and inspired people understand. Now you see, what can change the world today is what has changed the world before, an idea. And when you put your best foot forward and follow that nagging, idea within your mind and heart, change is simply a byproduct of your passions, your ambitions, your resilience, and your commitment to leaving the world a better place than when you first found it. 
uh, to the teachers, parents, and adults in here listening today. I want you all to listen to me very carefully when I say this. Stop telling the young people that they are too young to inspire change. And to my young people today, don't listen when people say to you that you are the future of this country. You are not the future of this country. You are the reality of it today. You matter today. You can inspire and create change today. Your voice matters and you should not wait until the future or wait until you're old enough to impact the world. You know, the worst thing that we can do is tell a young person full of ambition that they are only capable of inspiring change whenever they become adults, whenever they are able to, to vote and fully think like, like an adult. You matter now. And the tools of change and hope have been within you your whole life. You are the spark of change. That idea that you have will ignite the explosion of change all across this city, all across this state, all across this country, and most importantly, all across this world. That explosion that you release will be felt by all those who oppose progress. It will be felt by all those that look down on us and underestimate us because of our age or because of our skin color or because of where we come from or because of some other aspect in our lives. But what they don't understand is that change and progress is an unstoppable wave. And if you stand in the way of progress and prosperity, you will be steamrolled back into the past. Now, it's up to each and every one of you in here today to use that gift of change and spread it throughout your own communities and ultimately the world. We are the generation of hope. We are the generation of change, and, and if anyone is here to make America great again, it is going to be through the hard work and determination of our youth. <laughs> as well as our parents stepping up and raising strong, passionate children who are good people. You know, one of my favorite quotes is from Frederick Douglass. It's easier to build strong children than it is to repair broken men. Now think about that. It's easier to build strong children than to repair broken men. All of you here who are parents know that it truly takes an entire village to raise a child. So, Let's make sure that that village is a strong and powerful community that in turn raises strong and powerful young people. It's time for us to break this continuous cycle of suffering and dysfunction. And the solution is within this room. The solution is within each and every one of you in here today. We need more doctors. We need more lawyers, more senators and representatives, more business people, and most importantly, more people who care. Remember that you are now carrying the torch and it's up to you to carry your people and this country far into the future. On your journey through life, do not be afraid to be ambitious. You see, the greatest danger for most of us lies not in setting our aim too high and falling short, but setting our aim too low and achieving our mark. Do not be afraid to inspire change in others, and most importantly, within yourself. Wherever you go in life, make sure the world feels who you are. Make sure the world 
remembers all the good that you've done. And make sure you do justice by those who have fought and died to get you where you are today. Thank you very much, Santa Fe Indian School. Um, and I wish all of you the best in your future endeavors. So thank you.